morning. Oh. Uh, I've been asked to inform you all, sadly, that uh, Jeanette Garfield has had a heart attack. And she is at Tim's house. We will certainly include her in prayers, and I ask that you do that throughout your personal prayer this week also, that you remember Jeanette. Uh, also, piece of trivia, I had some business cards made with my contact information. They are on the table back. I'm going to grab them. I'll be at the door with them to hand them out to you. Uh, so you have my phone number and my email if you need to reach me. Contact me anytime. It's not a problem. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Today's festival is a bridge between the Advent, Christmas, Epiphany cycle that comes to a close today and the Lent Easter cycle that begins in several days. <laughs> On a high mountain, Jesus is revealed as God's beloved son, echoing the words at his baptism. This vision of glory sustains us as Jesus faces his impending death in Jerusalem. We turn this week to Ash Wednesday and our yearly baptismal journey from Lent to Easter. Following an ancient custom, we put aside the Alleluia at the conclusion of today's liturgy. This word of joy will be omitted during the uh, Pentel season of Lent and will be sung again at Easter. We stand for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as, our, as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading this morning is a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will chant our responsive psalm this morning, Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in evil and the princes plot together against the Lord? and against the Lord's anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. God, whose throne is in heaven, is laughing. The Lord holds them in derision. Then in wrath 
God speaks to them, and in rage fills them with terror. As for me, I have anointed my king upon Zion, a holy mountain. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now you kings be wise, be warned your rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow in worship. Lest the Lord be angry, and perish in a sudden blaze of wrath. Happy are all who take refuge in God. Our second reading is a reading from the second book of Peter, chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from the mountain while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his face became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <coughs> While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they were, fell to the ground and were overcome with fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
We're going to try this today, hoping you can hear me better. Six days after foretelling his death, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John and leads them up to a high mountain by themselves. And together with Peter's brother, Andrew, these are the three disciples who have been with Jesus the longest. They've been with Jesus ever since by the Sea of Galilee when, when he called them to leave their nets and to follow him. I wonder if they're thinking about earlier mountaintop moments as they climb those steep slopes. It's a pretty fair trek up to the top, to the mountain. I wonder if maybe they're thinking about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, or perhaps uh, the mountain on which Jesus healed the blind and the lame. They may remember an even earlier story of Abraham's journey with Isaac to the mountain where, where God provided a ram. So what will the followers of Jesus encounter on the mountain this time? Will it be something new or something old? Now, early readers of Matthew's gospel, they were a congregation of mostly Jewish people who had begun to follow Jesus. They probably heard echoes of Exodus 24 as the events of the transfiguration unfolded in their hearing. This enables them to understand Jesus as the new Moses who leads and empowers the people of God. They know the older story. Leaving Aaron behind along with the elders, Moses took Joshua with him to the mountain, where after six days the glory of the Lord burned on the mountaintop and God spoke to Moses in that place. He gives him the words of the covenant that God is making with God's people. And there's similar echoes of Moses' experience that are in the account of Elijah's mountaintop experience with God. So when Moses and Elijah appear on the mountaintop with the transfiguration of Jesus, these echoes from stories from long ago come to mind for the disciples, and they immediately came to mind for the readers of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus and his followers are then new players in a very old story of encounters that God has with God's people. So new story, old players. A face shining in the sun, a shining like the sun, clothes of dazzling white, a voice from a cloud, something powerful. Something powerful is happening here on the mountaintop. But it's difficult for the disciples to understand. Even, even with all of those clues of things that have happened in the past, it's still difficult. Because along with other people, they have known Jesus as a teacher, a healer, even a prophet along the lines of Elijah or Jeremiah. And of course, Jesus does fulfill each of those roles, but no one of those roles alone captures his full identity. Peter gets it right when he confesses that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. But Peter's a human being, and his human limitations don't allow him to understand what that all might mean. On top of the mountain, Peter recognizes that Jesus' appearance and that his presence there with Moses and Elijah is significant. So, Lord, it's good for us to be here, he says. But he doesn't fully understand what he is seeing. He suggests to build three booths, or, or three dwelling places, three tents. It sounds like it's an attempt to capture the moment, to, to preserve the moment for all time. A way to, to domesticate this wild and frightening experience, that, to turn it into something that's more of an everyday household encounter. You can sort of imagine Peter jumping up and down with his hand in the air, sort of like an elementary student who's desperate to give the answer, but who can't quite get it right because he doesn't fully understand the question. 
In Peter's attempt to make sense of this dramatic transformation that he sees occurring before his eyes, he tries to talk it out. He tries to speak the unspeakable. And while he's still speaking, a bright cloud appears and overshadows all of them. And there's a voice that interrupts his speech. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Notice how similar that is to the words that God spoke at Jesus' baptism. Now, every one of us has known from little on that there's times when it's best to keep quiet. But it's very much in character that Peter, Peter doesn't get that this is exactly one of those moments when it might be better for him to keep quiet. The only people speaking that really have any significance here are the voices of Jesus and the voice of God. Certainly not Peter. But Jesus speaks to Peter and to the others. He says, get up, do not be afraid. So often we hear Jesus coming with a word of peace and this is yet another one of those times. His, he touches, it's a sign of comfort a comfort and a healing. His words serve to reassure the disciples that no matter what happens, no matter what they may not understand, no matter how frightening these circumstances might seem, and if you think about it, it would be, I think, pretty scary. No matter what happens, it's in God's hands. God is in control. This dazzling appearance of Jesus also reflects Daniel's apocalyptic vision of the Son of Man. There are some translations of the Bible that call the name of Jesus that's used here, Son of Man, by a more gender-inclusive term, the Son of Humanity. What this transfiguration is, in that all-inclusiveness of Son of Humanity, it's a preview of the appearance of the angel at the empty tomb of Jesus. It's a powerful vision. It's one that's rich with meaning. But the time is not right for the disciples to tell others. Even as a preview of the resurrection, the transfiguration cannot fully be grasped until Jesus has been crucified, laid in a tomb, and risen from the dead. Then and now, the full meaning of the transfiguration, it's true for us. It may not become clear until we return to the valley after a certain passage of time. After they come down from the mountain, the disciples listen as the voice is instructed. They hear Jesus' parables. They hear how Jesus responds to his friends and his enemies, and they hear this repeated reference to son of man, son of humanity. But even so, it's not long before these same three disciples fall asleep, even though Jesus requests that they stay awake and pray with him. They watch as he's arrested and led away. What they're seeing and hearing now as they see Jesus led away is a far cry from this dazzling display that they saw on the mountaintop. The story of transfiguration calls us away from trying to understand Jesus only as he is revealed in glory, because that is only part of who Jesus is. It points us down the mountain. One of the epiphany hymns for this day talks about lead us into the plain. Jesus is calling us to walk with him, to go with him into the suffering, hungry crowds, to hear the call that the food pantry's out of food, to respond to that. That's living in the plain. This divine voice commands us, too, to listen to Jesus. But you know that listening is more than simply hearing. 
Listening includes acting. Listening includes responding. Jesus says it in the Sermon on the Mount. Building on this rock that is Jesus means to not only hear his words, but to act on them. If we just hear and don't obey, not worth very much. At Gethsemane, when Jesus himself faces the, faces the temptation to disobey God the Father and to abandon the road to the cross, the same disciples who saw him transfigured wait with him while he grieves and prays. Jesus passes the test, of course, but they do not. Jesus goes on to walk steadfastly to his suffering and death. The disciples desert him and flee. On the cross, Jesus shows to the world the obedient Son of God in all of his suffering humanity, pouring out his blood for the forgiveness of sins. After the resurrection, the Son of God appears to the disciples with all of his divine authority, and he calls them to baptize people, to teach people, to tell people about Jesus. And then he sends them down the mountain and into this world that he loves. And he promises that he will be with them always. And so you and I, too, are sent. We must listen and we must obey because that's what we do as followers of Jesus. We hear his words to us and we act. We respond to them. And Jesus promises that he will be with us too to the end of the age. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <coughs> Embolden your church as it is witness to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Dwell with your whole creation, from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world, especially in Syria and Turkey. Merciful God, guide and give us wisdom to all in authority, our mayors, Michael McCormick and David Goins and our local leaders, our governor, J.B. Pritzker, and state legislatures, our president, Joseph Biden, and national le legislatures. Bring freedom and justice to all nations, especially Ukraine. Merciful God, give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat, accompany with your touch to those who are homebound, sick or isolated, especially Jill, Priscilla, Sharon, Bev, Charlie, Jonathan, Audrey, Kirk, Judy, Pastor Len, Beth, and Jeanette, and those we name now before you. Merciful God, Make us eager, eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. We pray for our relationship with the people of China. Turn our hearts towards peace and reconciliation. Merciful God. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even in the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, we bring to you our hopes and our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore. 
Through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this holy food, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great High Priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thank you. 
Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. We stand for the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen.